excuses, ladies. Hello, everybody. Episode number 15. I have a special guest with me today. Her name is Silva Nahabidian, and I want to make sure that I'm saying it right. Eva, that is amazing. Good job. Like, that is absolutely perfect. Everyone butchers my last name and calls me Sylvia, so you got it perfect. I read your story, too, when you said it, the story about you. I'm like, I don't want to butcher your name. My name been butchered, and I think I got used to it, but you always want people to say your name correctly, right, Eva? You or still Eva, not yes. Eva, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> but I kind of got used to it. But anyway, welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. I know that the guys will come in here, and I always say, this is a page for girls, but we welcome everybody. That's yeah. that's really what it is. It's what is the No Excuses Ladies all about? It's it's a page, it's a movement. I want to create an overall movement for all the ladies out there, all the girls to learn the no excuses way of life. Because I believe that if we stop the excuses, our life becomes easier, happier, more joyful, and you're going to scale in business and in life. That's what it is. So welcome everybody to the show today. Silva Nahavidian again. This is awesome. I am super excited to have you on board because she really, she really represents no excuses when you're gonna hear her story. So it's absolutely amazing. We're gonna start from the beginning. So please, please tell us a little bit about you. I would love to. Um, thank you so much for having me. It's truly an honor and a privilege, Eva. I am a big fan of the Eckert family. I adore you and your husband. I've met Tyson, but I've never met Ivanka. And you have such a beautiful family. And you are showing up so fiercely for, for men and women across across the nation. And it's an honor and a privilege to be here. So thank you to you guys. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for the <laughs> kind words and awesome words. Uh, we, we have a chance nice to meet each other here on, on the screen. We've never met each other in person, right? But we kind of knew about each other. And this is how we are. You see, that's no excuses. You just approach someone, talk to someone, and you have them right there. That's it. And the internet has no boundaries. So welcome everybody. And um, I'm going, I have a lot to say to you guys. I have so much to say. I'm going to share a little bit about me, about who I am, how I got to where I'm at, my career, the obstacles and tri trials and tribulations I had to overcome. And my goal is that you guys walk away with one or two or 10 nuggets of information that will help serve you in your lives, on your life path. And I believe man was created for man. We are here to help and support and elevate one another. And I hope that I impart a little bit of wisdom on you. And so I'm going to jump right in. And like Eva said, my name is Silva Nahabedian, and I'm the director of education for a company called Dazzle Drive. And I'm a manicurist by trade. Yes, you can see her nails if you would be on Zoom. And I see people joining us on Facebook here and on Instagram. Make sure you guys joining us on Zoom because then you can see Silva and you can ask her questions. Absolutely, yes. And if you need us to tell you the password, we're, we'll ha we're happy to share it yes. with you here too. Yes. So I want to share my story about how I started my career and, like I said, adversities I overcame, bold actions I took, and how I helped grow a multi-million dollar nail lacquer company. Unbelievable. And, uh, Unbelievable. I got the, the, the chills already. So, yes, tell yeah. us. Tell us how it all started, like the beginning of, of why you chosen the nails industry in general. Why did you think the, that this is the path? It's such a great story. And I will tell you that I knew in my gut, in my core, in my soul that I was destined for greatness. Like I knew I was destined to have a great life and I've always been hungry for more. And I wanted to find a job where I was excited for Monday, not excited for Friday. And if you're living in a rush to get to Friday, you're going to be freaking miserable your whole life. Yes. And so that was important to me. And from a young age, I knew that I was a girly girl. I knew that I loved hair. I loved makeup. I loved nails. I loved skin. I loved all of that stuff. But I came from a family of immigrant parents who immigrated from uh, Armenia to America in 1974. And they were immigrants who didn't necessarily know how to help guide my path. 
uh, college was uh, optional. Like my parents thought, oh, she's she's a girl. She's going to get married and have babies. She doesn't need to go to college. Yes. Like it was never even suggested to go to college. Um, and to be honest with you, I suffer from dyslexia and I knew I didn't want to go to college, but I knew I was destined for a great career and I wanted to be in the beauty business, but I didn't know if I wanted to do hair, skin or nails. And the way that I determined, it's not a profound story, but this is how I determined that I was going to do nails. At the time, I was going to a hairstylist in um, Salon in Scottsdale. And I said to her, I said, Tammy, can I come hang out at your salon for a week and just shadow you, shadow the manicurists, shadow uh, estheticians to see what is it I'm most drawn to? What resonates most with me? And that's what I did. I hung out at a salon, a super fancy salon for a week. And I saw the the checks that women are, were writing at the time people wrote checks. Yes. And the amount of money that there was to be made in this industry blew my mind. And at the end of the day, I decided on nails over hair because I decided I didn't want to stand for 10 hours a day. I'd rather sit. Like, it's just, like I said, it's not a profound story how I chose nails. That was ultimately what it came down to because I noticed a lot of the hairstylists had back problems. I thought, okay, I don't want that. I'm just going to go with the nail route. Yes. And so I started beauty school. And in beauty school, I learned that I was allergic to artificial enhancement. So if you guys uh, are familiar with acrylics, that I'm allergic to that. And I didn't learn that until I was in beauty school. But unfortunately, in school, you have to learn how to do that stuff in order to pass a state board exam and get licensed. So I make it literally suffer through beauty school, Eva. I get out of uh, beauty school. I take my state board exam. I get licensed. I get a job in a very fancy salon in Phoenix. But let me and introduce you for a, for a second. Sure, I'm sure. sorry. I just thought about this. So you, your big obstacle here is already, the obstacle is there because you have an allergy, but yet you're yeah. not giving up that school. Right. Exactly. You continue going. And that's what we wanted to show. This is right there. That no excuses mindset is being shown. That's what I always say. All of us have it. It's just sometimes the obstacle over instead of overcoming the obstacle, like squish us down instead of saying, you know what, this is an, this is just life. Life brings it like when you go through the forest, if the, the forest doesn't have any trees down, it does. You need to climb over them, right? You can't just have a path uh, uh, with roses. That's how right. the life is. And once you get it, right, you're going to understand that this is just a part of life. That there are obstacles and we need to overcome them, right? And you do. So yeah, and who nobody was standing in my way but me. And I had to get out of my own way. And so when I started working at this super fancy salon in Phoenix, at the time, there was a, a you used to go to one salon to get everything done, your hair, your skin, your nails. It was a one stop shop. It's not like it is now. So back in the 90s, I started the salon. And I had all these colleagues that said to me, Silva, you are never going to build a clientele. Everybody wants acrylics, wear a mask, wear gloves, figure it out. But you can't do just manicures and pedicures. Nobody's going to come to you. Everybody wants fake nails. And I was like, BS, watch me. Oh, my God. I love it. So she did it. Look, another point. We always say this. Don't listen to what people say. There are naysayers. There are people that will tell you uh, their own fears or their own beliefs or what they come out to their heads, right? But you need to stay in your path and like, I got this. Yeah, that's right. And so sometimes the best way to motivate me personally is tell me I can't do something. And when when my colleagues were like telling me, uh, uh you're never going to make it in this industry because you can't just make a career off of manicures and pedicures that really lit the fire in my belly. And it made me even more motivated. And by the way, Eva, this was in the 90s before Instagram, before YouTube. Like, how did you become an expert in your field? Um, there was one trade show a year that I could go to and take some classes. There was one industry magazine. But the way that you do it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. And that is a direct quote that I learned from Steve Eckert, by the way. Love it. And so, <laughs> yeah, and he, he taught me that. And you... 
I back then what I would do is I would book manicures and pedicures with colleagues or literally hover over their shoulders and watch and see what are they doing? How are they doing it? And sometimes you learn what to do. Go to your competition, watch what they're doing, study what they're doing. Sometimes you learn what to do and oftentimes you learn what not to do. And that was very valuable. And so what happened was in 10 months out of beauty school, I had a solid, solid clientele. Literally, I was 19 going on 20, 10 months out of beauty school. I became known as the it girl that no one could ever get an appointment with. It was the big joke in town, like somebody had to die before you could get an appointment with Silva. And that was like the God's honest truth. Someone would either have to move away or die for me to open up space in my books. So eight years into my career, life took me on a little bit of a different path. And I ended up in Los Angeles. And that Los Angeles is actually where I was born and raised when my family moved to Phoenix when I was in high school. But eight years into my career, I go to L.A. And I moved there for a boy. And it's always those boys that make us move, right? (laughs) (laughs) And in Los Angeles, I was shoved into the entertainment industry. Uh, I got an agent, you guys. And I started to do nails for things like movie sets, commercial sets, uh, photo shoots, celebrity house calls. It was a wild, wild ride in L.A. And what ended up happening... As a result of that world, being in that world, I was voted a best manicurist in Los Angeles by Allure magazine. Wow. Congratulations. We have, that's amazing by Allure magazine. Wow. So, so, so tell us some names of the, can you, can you list some names of the famous people that you did nails with? So, um, Rita Wilson, Tom Hanks. I didn't do Tom Hanks nails. I did his mom's nails, but I was in his home. Christy Brinkley, Cindy Crawford, Lindsay Lohan, a lot of celebrities, a lot of A-list celebrities, but then also a lot of models too. So I would do nails for like Victoria's Secrets annual angel show or whatever. So that was it, right? You met probably so (laughs) many people there, right? So So many many people, you guys, but I will also tell you that it was not as glorious as it sounds. Mm -hmm. You're really the hired help. You're there to be seen and not heard. You're really a nobody. It gave me great bragging rights and I made incredible money and it looks good on my resume, but it was hard work. So I don't want to sugarcoat it and make it sound like it was so glorious. And what happened was around, if you guys remember, 2008, 2009, the economy started to tank. Yes. And by the way, when I moved from uh, Phoenix to LA, my Phoenix clients were so sad and they were calling me all the time. Several of them, I would say a good dozen of them used to fly out to LA regularly to come get their nails done with me. So in my absence, they never found anyone in Phoenix that they really uh, enjoyed their manicures and pedicures. But we kept in touch throughout the years that I was living in LA. When the economy tanked, 2008, 9, um, there was a big writer's strike in the entertainment industry, so I wasn't doing as much work. I ended up moving back to Phoenix. Oh, the, by the way, the relationship tanked, too. Mm-hmm. So I ended that up moving happens, back. That's right. Happens. And uh, I came back to Phoenix, which is where I'm at now, by the way. And I had to rebuild my clientele and gather everyone out of the ashes. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that was blaringly evident in my absence was that my clients were so displeased with anyone that they went to for a manicure. And the thing that I kept hearing from them is, Silva, you need to teach. Silva, you need to clone yourself. And Eva, I'm sure you can kind of relate to that on some level. Yes, totally, exactly, because uh, going back, thank you for sharing this, and those are some awesome points. When we, me and Steve started Peak Physique years, years ago, uh, it's been so such a journey, too, for us. That's what our clients uh, would say. By the way, Nazdrovia, we drink water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Beauty is water, ladies. So uh, the clients would tell us, uh, "You need to have, you need to clone yourself." Exactly what they would say. You need to have more of you. And we were like thinking, "How on earth are we gonna do it?" And that's exactly what we did. We started teaching. We started hiring and training people to the clone of us, to the replica of us. And that was the only way 
to keep the clients, keep the clients and yeah. give them the best service because the expectation, our expectations were high and we knew it if we have system down and process down that people will have to repeat the same thing in order to have the same outcome with our clients. That's what we did. Exactly. And you have figured out that formula. Yes, absolutely. We did. So, we did. So, you know, I'm a big believer in in manifesting your destiny, but you can't just wish things into fruition. I mean, you really have to put words into action. Therefore, you will end up manifesting things. And words alone are not enough when it comes to the law of attraction. You've really got to, like, um, grind. And so what happened was I started to research on how to become a nail instructor. I thought, okay, my clients are onto something. I really need to impart wisdom on the community. I've got to um, empower manicurists because I have a lot of really good trips, tricks, tips, and techniques on how to give a badass manicure and pedicure. I'm not taking this stuff with me to the grave. So I want to pass it along. That desire paired with the fact that my hands were giving out on me oh, after wow. 20 yes. plus years of, of doing this, like it was, it was time. It was time to move on to the next phase of my career. So I started researching, how do I become a nail instructor? I knew nothing about how to become a licensed instructor. And it was so ironic how the universe works. I cannot even believe the magic that was about to happen next. I end up meeting a lady who was about to open two high-end beauty schools and she knew nothing about nails. And she came to me to learn a little bit about nails. And after giving her a manicure and pedicure, by the end of that two hour appointment, she said to me, what's it going to take to get you to come and work for me and run the nail department? And I thought, holy crap, like, um, I don't know. Like, I, I'm not a licensed instructor. I don't know anything about teaching, really. I can intuitively teach, but I didn't know how to create structure around it. She said, don't worry. I'll take care of you getting licensed. You just name your price on what it's going to take for you to quit your day job and come and work with me full time. And I will fund the whole project. Wow. And, so, again, yeah. yes, the law of attraction. But throughout the whole thing, what we see, you, you, you're really sticking to the love that you have. And uh, yeah. because you, your love is so strong, your devotion, the obsession, I would say, yeah, is so, so accurate, engraved in you that the the life is showing you uh, opportunities. Is still continuously doing what you love in just a different way, and this is exactly. Mm -hmm. When me and Steve was this kind of similar situation for me, because I trained for so many, so many years, used to, do you remember Lucio Roberts? Do you guys, do you girls remember Lucio Roberts? Um, the, 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 the chain, Lucille or Roberts, they, they, yes. they, they chain when the ladies would only go and work out. So I, I remember that, them. yeah. Before I even, before we even opened up Peak Physique Bootcamp and Boxing, I worked for them. I worked for several different locations in New York and New Jersey. And I would have to teach sometimes five or six hours doing cardio and my legs starts giving up, my lower back. I start having problems and I thought, how on earth we can teach uh, for so many hours, how we can create something that will not require from us to be so physical. You can't mm -hmm. train for 10 hours yourself and other people. That's not, you're not 20, you're not 18, no. that you can do this for a year. We're talking about career. And that's when the thought of bootcamp and boxing came, that we're going to be showing exercises, but coaching, not training with the clients. That's mm -hmm. how the whole concept was designed before we even landed in other gyms. So uh, mm. really, that's how we started. That's how it all. What a was, great story! That, yeah, there was not even not even one boot camp around the area when we started. We were the first one, the first boot camp. Oh my gosh! Are company. you serious? Yep. There what was no a great boot camps. Story. There was no boot camps after us. They were start popping here and there, all all over the place. But we were the first one. So exactly know what you're saying. But the love that you have, it, 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 you brainstorm. And you design mm -hmm. something that the, the law, like you said, of attraction show you and the opportunities and you just create things sometimes out of nothing. And that is so beautifully said. And I really do believe we're not perfect, but we are purposed. And it's important to find what your purpose is. And once you find that purpose, give it away. 
people need to know what that is. Yes. And, yes. and that'll really make for a meaningful life. So going back to, to this lady who offered me uh, this once in a lifetime opportunity to be director of education for a school. And she got me through, she got me through the whole licensing program. And I started the program and my, my nail technology program was the best nail program in town. <clears throat> people loved it. My classes were always sold out. Amazing. And I wish that story had a happy ending, but it doesn't because this particular woman ended up running the school into the ground and she was actually embezzling financial aid money from students. And so it actually, it didn't have such a happy ending. And at the time it was like the worst thing that could happen to me. I was like, how could this be happening to me? You feel like such a victim of the circumstances, but, uh, I was so disappointed, but I didn't know at the time that the setback was all a part of the set up for the next phase of my career. And I strongly and believe in that too. Totally, totally. That's how the life is kind of. So tell us, tell us more. What happened? So school tanks, it closes. I call my sweet, amazing clients, all 120 of them and say, guess what? I'm back in business. I opened up my salon back in Scottsdale and they, you know, welcomed me with open arms. All of them came back. So I'm back at the grind doing nails again, all while thinking, what is the next phase of my career? What am I going to do next? Am I going to open up my own school? And so I was, I had a million ideas going through my head that I was trying to manifest. One day, this is about 2013, one of my clients says to me, Silva, have you ever heard of Dazzle Dry? And I'll be honest with you, Eva, I had never heard of it before. And I thought I was like, I thought I had my finger on the pulse of everything. I thought I knew everything about nails and what products are out there. But I'd never heard of this product before. And you know how when you've never heard of something and then you do, now it's on your radar. Now you see it everywhere. You yes. hear about it everywhere. And that's kind of what happened with Dazzle Dry. All of a sudden, it was on my radar. And as a student of my craft, I purchased the products and I began to use it on my clients. And I will tell you wholeheartedly, this was the greatest, greatest discovery of my career. The results knocked my socks off. And I thought, holy crap, I found the holy grail of nail polish. And I'll tell you, this was such a blow to my ego because I thought I was the queen of making your nail polish last forever. And this product was outperforming any skills that I had. Oh. So I knew it was like the real deal. So I start to do some research. I start digging around going, who makes this stuff? Where can I buy it? Why isn't it in beauty supplies? Why isn't this product offered in every nail salon? Mm -hmm. And in my research, I discovered that the manufacturing facility was in Chandler. So my, my studio is, was in Scottsdale and Chandler was the next city over. So like literally in my backyard, this stuff is being manufactured and I've never heard of it before. Mm. So this is where I took bold action. I do some great cyber stalking. Like I'm really, really good at finding stuff on the internet. <laughs> That's, so after awesome. that's, really, that's really being self-sufficient and like searching, right? <laughs> because they're all good. Awesome. Yeah. So thank goodness to the power of LinkedIn. I find the CEO of this company. The company is called VB Cosmetics. And I find the CEO. Her name is Dr. Vivian Valenti. And I start communicating with her via LinkedIn. And I could not believe all the products that this woman had manufactured that I've used throughout my whole career. I didn't know who the chemist was that was actually formulating the products that we're using. So she was, and, because the, she was the one that created the original uh, a gel nail? Gel polish, yeah. So that's Dr. Her, Vivian Valenti. That's, yes, yeah. that's the lady, lady. So you go to the nail salons and you still yeah. do them. That's the lady, right? Right, it's her? It's such a crazy thing. story. Yeah. So Dr. Valenti actually invented the very first UV curing gel top coat back in 1989. And it's a very long story, and I'll spare you the details. But fast forward to 1997, the FDA conducted a study about the harmful effects of UVA rays. Listen you know, to when this. we stick our hands in those lights, ladies, when we go into tanning beds. I mean, we know that it's a no-no, but we still do it. And the FDA learned that 
one photon or one particle of light from those UV rays is potentially more dangerous than going out into the sun, into the sun's natural rays, potentially leading to premature aging of the skin and or cancer, right? So we know not to go into tanning beds, but we have no problem sticking our hands in those lights. Yes, yes, listen, so, don't do this anymore. <laughs> And this woman, Dr. Vivian Valenti, has tremendous, tremendous integrity. And she says, Silva, I make products that solve problems, not products that create them. So she actually sold her patent, even though she was making quite the profit and doing really well manufacturing this stuff. She has so much integrity that she stopped manufacturing those products and sold her patent, went back into the laboratory and said, okay, how do I make a product that lasts like a gel? performs like a gel, dries quickly, but doesn't require those damn lights. And it took her 10 years of research and development before she gave birth to the Dazzle Dry system. That's again, another obsession, another giving, not giving out, like imagine the, those stories are amazing. That mm -hmm. 10 years of studying and repetitive uh, different types of tests that she had to run. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And just having the integrity to say, yeah, maybe I can make a lot of money doing this. But no, I don't want to wake up one day and find out the products that I was making potentially was hurting people. Mm -hmm. So what happened? This is this is where I took bold action. I asked her if she would meet with me one on one. Mind you, up until now, our relationship is strictly virtual on LinkedIn. So I said, uh, Dr. Valenti, would you meet with me so I can discuss with you how I can help you grow your business? This product is too, too, too good and everyone needs to know about it. I mean, could you imagine being bold enough to take that kind of a risk to just reach out to a CEO of a company and say, hey, you want to meet with me? That's totally I got some idea. action. That's totally. How long did it take you? How long did it take you this whole, um, I would say, communication with her? Do you remember how long? Yeah, it took me about, I'm going to say like six months because number one, I needed to know that the product was the real deal before I took that kind of bold action. <clears throat> and I knew that I was, that my purpose was to spread the gospel of this product. And so I created a PowerPoint. P.S. I can't make a PowerPoint to save my life. I'm a manicurist. I never had to work on the computer. I've had to learn these skills that I never had before. So I created a PowerPoint presentation of all the things that I know I can do. Because remember, I did it with the other lady that owned the beauty school. Yeah. I learned yeah. how to create an education program. I yeah. learned how to grow a company. And so I had the tools in my toolbox. Um, did I have doubt? Hell yeah, I had doubt. Did I have imposter system a syndrome? Yeah. Did I feel like a phony and a fraud? Were the voices in my head saying, Silva, who the hell are you to grow a company? <laughs> of course, I had all of those doubts. So you guys, if you're having those doubts, Know that they're normal, okay? You're human, but get them out of your head. Yes. Ask them to go away. Thank you for saying this because that's what we always discussing on these pages, that so many of you will think about people that achieved so much that the people have no fear, that people have yeah. no doubt. All of us have because we are all under this on the same planet, under the same sun. We're drinking the same water. We're all the same. <laughs> Yet it's just what we do with this. It's, it's, it's a thing that it's learnable skill. Mm -hmm. It's learnable. Some of us have more, I would say, taking bold actions and being maybe f fearless, right? Some of mm -hmm. us have that, mm -hmm. um, uh, that, that, that padding, that maybe that yeah. ground, but a lot of us could make the same moves. We just, something Thank just you. totally stops them and it's on us to fight this. It's on us to say, I can do this. W what's the mm. worst thing could happen to her? The worst thing could happen to her if she asked her, the other lady would say, the doctor would say, no, I don't. And I bet, you know what would happen to her? She would right. say, I am, I'm going to try again to ask her mm -hmm. again because that's it. Yeah. Don't take no for an answer so quickly. Uh, Absolutely. It, it really is. It just shows me uh, something from my story. And I shared this with everybody here. When I came over to America, I am just remind you all I'm here by myself. Well, now I created my own family, but I flew here by myself with having a crazy vision of 
being in America, living here. So when I contacted someone that I did not know and bought a plane ticket to come to this, to America with all my savings, before I even ended up doing this, I came across organization that's supposed to send me as an au pair to America. We're talking about 24 <laughs> years ago. And all of them said three times no to me. And, and but I was so set up for my own vision and my own destination that I said, who the hell are they to decide that I'm not going to fly to my lovely land of America? I'm like, I'm going no matter what. And then the opportunities come to you. Good so for it's you. Exactly. is the same way. Same, same. So, that, that bold determination. And so the other voices in my head were saying, Silva, you have all the information that this industry needs and you are the vessel and the driver of these, this message to the masses. And so I got out of my own head. I got out of my own way. And I knew that Dr. Valenti uh, was a genius woman who had created the product, but she didn't have the right team to disseminate the brand to the masses. And I knew my expertise could bridge that gap between this brilliant chemist and the consumers. I knew that I could help. And what, why? Because I knew that um, this product is very demonstrable, meaning there's a right way and a wrong way to use this company. I mean, this product. Mm -hmm. And I knew that a nail professional, someone who really knew nails inside and out, is going to bridge that gap and teach licensed nail professionals and consumers how to use it correctly. So I outlined my vision on everything that we were going to do to build an education team to go out in salons and spas to teach people how to use this product. And in the back of my head, I'm thinking, how the heck am I going to acquire these skills to manage other human beings? I've never managed anyone in my life. Like, I, so I became a voracious reader of books and eventually plugged into a mentorship program with Steve and Bedros. And they really helped me to structure not only my career, but my life as well. Mm -hmm. So I went seeking them for mentorship on how to become a better leader. And I just came out a better human being, period. And by the way, this was a time where... Uh, I, the part of the story I left out was Dr. Valenti uh, did hire me. She took me on. This was a time where, you know, we we didn't have a lot of money. We couldn't really afford any healthy salaries. It was basically like almost like a startup. But even though the, the product had been around for a long time, it was essentially almost like a startup. And this was a time where I didn't have the money to plug into any sort of mentorship programs. And I'm really humbling myself right now to tell you that I had to max out two credit cards to even be able to afford education and a mentorship program on how to be a better leader. That's taking bold action. That is. I was heard out of my mind. I was like, how am I going to pay for this? And <clears throat> um when I started out with the company in 2015, we had somewhere between four and eight employees at any given time. It was usually like, usually like five employees back when I started. Um, and I am so, so, so proud today that to say today we have a team of over 50 employees. Bravo. Plus, thank you. Plus 22 independent contractors that are regional education ambassadors who are part of my team that are positioned all over the country uh, that go out and basically teach salons and spas how to use this extraordinary product. I could not have done it without my team. I did not do this by myself. It really took a village, but I had a vision of how education could help uh, catapult that growth. And we've had a 100% increase of sales year over year, and it really did take a village of people. And so... Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit how I lead my team. Mind you, I've never managed a soul in my life. I had to do this intuitively and by reading and by plugging into mentorships and again, standing on the shoulders of giants. Mm -hmm. And this is going to sound crazy and woo woo, but I'm just going to say it. I lead my team with love, Eva. I love and this. I'm Like, I don't know how else to be. I'm very, very heart centered. And, um, I 
am the the boss and the leader that I always wish I had growing up and in jobs that I had when I was younger. Um, so I became that leader that I never had. And I take a personal interest in their lives. I act as their support system. I come to them with a serving heart and hand. And my expectations are high, but I'm not a micromanager. Okay. Um, I have... I have an assistant. She's this amazing woman named Roz and she's from Sri Lanka and she's so sweet and humble and kind. And she, she humbles me so much. She reminds me every day that I'm the best boss she's ever had. And I'll tell you, this blows my freaking mind. Cause I'm like, how I've never had an employee in my life. How am I, you've been working for 50 years. How am I the best boss you've ever had? But it's a real testament to the work that I've done first and foremost on me before I could serve my team. Yes, obviously and you can't. You, it's impossible to give something out if you don't have. So, Sylvia, you possess something. I mean, yeah. just talking with you and I know that all of us too, who hear you right now and who watches this and will replay this whole message finds you coming and no ego and just uh, really feeling uh, they will feel your energy in such an Thank amazing you. way. Really. Thank you so much. And um, are we okay on time? I've got a few more things. Yes, I'd love we have to hear more minutes. We wrap Absolutely. Yes, we wanted okay. to hear. Yes, we wanted to hear awesome. more about a little, the, the nails and we wanted to show the product. I have mine here, so I just want to lift this. For and sure. Have it for sure. <laughs> Uh, I will tell everybody that building a business is not for the faint of heart. There was no shortage of blood, sweat and tears and even heartache uh, as a result of my unwavering focus on on this business. During this time, I, I lost my marriage. Not that my marriage collapsed because of my career, but it sure doesn't help when you're an entrepreneur who's so laser focused on on building a company. Um and I was criticized by my friends. I was criticized by my family for taking on a crazy opportunity. Like, what do you mean you're le leaving your amazing salon business to go work for somebody you don't know? And there was a lot of people saying to me, you can't do it. And believe me, there were times where I wanted to throw in the towel. You better believe it. It's not easy. But despite all the obstacles that kept, came my way, I kept going because my why was much bigger than my pain. And, you know, I have a, I have a great fam family that I love and adore, and I'm doing this all for myself and for my family. And so that's what kept me going. And the advice that I would give to anyone uh, that's starting out uh, or pivoting is sing singularity of focus. Take that one thing and go all in on it. Okay. Practice emotional intelligence and self-awareness. Yes, we Healthy have that daily book ritual. right here. We have the book right here. I'm going to show everybody right here. One of them. You can see oh. it. Yes. Oh. Emotional intelligence view. And, and it's good to read that, right? Because that gives you the whole school of broad spectrum of how to deal with yourself with others, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, I love that. I'll have to get that book. I did not know that book existed. Yes. Emotional exactly. intelligence. Yes. Yep. Healthy daily rituals, stacking your evening wins to your morning wins and plug into resources, books, podcasts, universities, and just practice that emotional discipline and stay calm and non-reactive in situations where it's easy to get pissed off. Um, and that's that's kind of the the advice that I would I would leave you guys with. And um, I would love to tell you a little bit about Dazzle Dry before we wrap up. Yes, please. Before and, we even start with the nails, I really wanted to say thank you. Um, you have such a vivid description of everything. You're very flawless with uh, with your words. And I absolutely love it. It was very fulfilling and 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 so great to hear this story and now Thank for you. some of you that listen and and think about your life because i know there are so many people women men even out there that have that passion have that purpose but something is either stopping them or they came across the obstacle 
or they just don't know what is the next move. But again, calm down mm -hmm. to the love and the, the care that you have. One, once that there is always that one thing that all of us have. For you was the nails and you've seen the whole vision, such a vision. Mm -hmm. You had that vision because if you didn't have that vision with this company, you wouldn't be able to stay. There is no question. Right. But you so, had so internal. True. And let me tell you, the bigger you play, the bigger the butterflies. I mean, that's it's nerve-wracking yes, that time. It just stand, it stand in your brilliance and wholeheartedly believe that you're worthy, worthy of that radical success. Yes. So, so, so such a, a really, it's so good to hear that, it, it, that after the success that you have, you still, uh, we're able to see beyond because the salon was doing so good and you could have just sat and say, you know mm -hmm. what, it's good for me. It's enough, right? I can settle. But yet there was yeah. something in you that calling for something bigger. Yes. And you found it because the call, there is a calling. I believe in that. There is a calling. Yeah. And because you call it in your head, it comes to you. It's the weirdest thing. That's the law of attraction. Let me find, where is that book here? Where is the, here? Let's do this. The secret, the magic. I have a whole library here. All right. I, I love pull out that. books. I love, I am obsessed about reading books. Yes, um, it, oh. it gives us, like she said, those are, that's when you sit on giants. You sit on giants in person when you come to meet them, but you sit on their books. You that's gotta it. read. And I never was a reader. I used to hate reading. I wanted to in school, but honestly, mm -hmm. I could never do that. I don't know. But now I love it. I get obsessed about it. Well, I will let you in on a little secret. Um, I'm not a good reader because of my dyslexia, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I listen to audiobooks. And I learned this actually from Steve. He taught me about a app called Scribed. Scribbed. S Scribbed, is that how Scribbed. you say it? S-C-R-I-B. Scribbed, right? Yes. Yeah. Scribbed or Audible. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And yes. it's like twelve ninety nine a month or something, and you get unlimited downloads of books. And I listen to probably uh, definitely like uh, one to two books per week. When I'm working, I'm listening to a book at the same time. When I'm driving, I've got an audio book going. And um, it, it you learn from other people, and therefore it's like it's like practically free university for those of us that didn't go to university. I mean, life is always about continuing to learn and evolve and level up and be a better person today than I was yesterday. Yes. Fantastic. What a great yeah. story. So yes, ladies, you got so much contact, uh, contest out of this, so much content. And I see people, Vasim here, I see people messaging here on Instagram as well. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for, for staying. I know that some of you don't have Facebook. I know that some of you wouldn't even go on Zoom, but thank you. We take this uh, as an acknowledgement, and I want to say thank you for everybody spending the time with us today. Uh, because we know how the life is, it's busy and, and you guys yet spend the time with us. So yes, let's move on to the nails. Yeah. We have the packages. So I want to, um, I want to tell you about Jazzle Joy really quickly and then we'll wrap it up. So somebody is going to be the lucky recipient of this kit right here. So Jazzle Joy is very much a system. It's a system of a nail cleanser that cleanses, sanitizes, moisturizes your nails, and it infuses it with pro vitamin B5, calcium, and hydrolyzed wheat protein. So the more you use it, the stronger and healthier your nails get. A base coat. You're yes. getting two colors. Ooh, two colors. There is a red and very red. like nice pale one, right? That's yeah, it's like a really nice nude, and then a, a top coat, top and coat. then revive. Revive is what actually thins out the the polish and the top coat when it gets thick. You guys, what I didn't tell you about this product is number one, we have a hundred and fifty colors to choose from, and it is thin hypoallergenic, non-toxic, non-yellowing. But the best part of all is that it air dries in five minutes. Yes. No joke. I experienced this in my myself. And uh, this whole box is, when, when Steve brought this home, I was like, I've never seen the most 
the, the baddest set for nails. I've never, I'm like, what is it? This is like so fancy, so beautiful in a package like this. You, it arrives to you and it has all this stuff for your nails. So I've been doing this for all the time when the salons were closed. Mm -hmm. And and yes, I am guilty. And I went back and I was and I'm, I'm doing just the dipping with the powder. Yeah. However, yeah. it it ruins your nails. So when it when it breaks, the nail is so weak. So and can brittle. You, so you said that once and my nails were already so good. And something, you know what got into me why I decided not that what? The, I love this product, that my laziness, that I didn't want it to someone to do it for me. Yep. And, and, and maybe one day there will be dazzle dry just locations. I don't know. I just that's thought right. about you're, this. <laughs> that's right. You're, you're in my head. <laughs> Absolutely. And actually, if you go on, uh, I'll tell you our, our website, it's dazzledry.com. If you go on there and plug in your zip code, it'll under the salon locator, you can find a salon near you that uses it. Oh my and God, what an awesome there, tip. Mm -hmm, that means they've been trained by us and they're going to, they better use it right. It's okay. not complicated. You can go to a salon and get it done or you can get the system and do it yourself. Yourself at home. And ladies, I've been doing this for so many months and I could not believe how the nails were growing. They were growing. They were very nice. And then mm -hmm. I was like, ah, they open it up. Maybe let, let me go and do my dipping. Not the UV light, just the dipping. But yes, it does ruin your nails. So this yeah. is a way back. But I will figure this out, uh, putting the zip code and trying to find a specialist in Dazzle Dry in my area. Hopefully there is one so I can go and enjoy it. Yep, and one of you will be the lucky recipient of this kit with the two colors. Um, and would you like me to ask the the trivia question, or do you want to pick a random winner? No, no, let's let's see, let's ask. We have uh, we have a couple of girls here, so let's okay. ask and let's see who that person is if they're gonna answer anything. <laughs> okay, so here's my trivia question: How many colors does Dazzle Dry make? Okay, how many colors does Dazzle Dry make? If you're going to answer right now, you're going to have an additional point. You have a chance to win. So, again, how many colors? And this has to be, we have to pick a winner now because that might be so many people answering later, but we want this now. So, tell us, you guys are on Instagram. I see you guys on Facebook as well. So, let us know how many colors. How many colors? Who is with us? I see Boston, but he's the guy. He's not. <laughs> he doesn't paint his nails. <laughs> All right. Well, we know the answer. What would be the, do you have any other question? Silva, do you have any other question? Oh, um, no. no. You mean a trivia question a trivia or just trivia in general? Question. Trivia question. Ooh, okay. Okay. Um, how many minutes does it take Dazzle Dry to dry? Yes. You said five minutes. Was that right? Yes. You don't have the answer yet, but you, you know, you are, you, you will see on, um, on F Facebook, we have some ladies, Basim is smiling. Uh, <laughs> I see, I see that some ladies came in here to, um, to the page. And we might pick a, a winner. I think Kim is watching. It seems like Su Susanna is watching. I don't know. Do you know exactly how is this with Facebook? Because sometimes it shows you that there is a bunch of people watching, but that one eye. Do you know how this correlates? No. I, you know, I just don't understand this. I because, don't either. I don't go live enough on Facebook to know that. But Yeah, I see Sandrina. I see Kim, I see, I see Susanna that are watching, but there is no responses. So let me see if I can bring them on camera. Okay, let me see if Susanna will add me out. Uh, somebody's sending the thumbs up. So I want to, hold on, let me see if, uh, add. Susanna can, no answer from my video. Susanna, uh, Alana, who is watching me now? Please, who is watching me now? Tell me who is watching us. Be oh, Basim is responding. Basim by five by chance. Yes, 
but we wanted to really get, get, get you that nice set, but nobody is answering. So I'm not sure if anybody's even watching now. We can make it a social post on Facebook and the first person to answer correctly could be the winner. There we go. We're going to do this on No Excuses Ladies after this uh, episode. And let's see. The first person that will answer will get this set. So You got it. So, Silva, you, it would be awesome if after the show, either maybe later today, if you could just show, do a quick live video after our show and tell them the sure. trivia question and tell them whoever will answer first we're gonna, is going to get the set. I want you them to hear it. from you, from you. Okay. That would be awesome. So, uh, yes, nobody answered, but I'm sure they will, uh, because a lot of people rewatching our videos later. So, totally. so many valuable lessons. It mm. was amazing. I feel honored to have you and to, uh, sure. to congratulate you for such an achievement because this is incredible achievement to build such a, uh, such a, a co company to, to hire so many people and have a um, really uh, educational system all around the country to do mm -hmm. this. Yeah. And it is, it's only the beginning. We're unstoppable and I won't stop until Dazzle dries in every single salon and spa across the country and on every single woman's nails. And we start with one, one person at a time, one woman. We don't discriminate one woman, one man at a time. We don't judge. If you want to wear nail polish, have at it. And so I really, really thank you, Eva, for the opportunity to spend some time with you and your audience and for granting me the privilege of being in your presence. And um, I thank you. Thank you so much, Silva. Thank you, everybody. We wanted to wish you a no excuses day, week, month, life. One yeah. thing at a time, one person at a time, one goal at a time. Just keep on going. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. I will talk to you guys later. No excuses, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>